Injuries are a serious problem for the active athlete and can set back someone's abilities for a significant amount of time. In some cases, injuries may also cause an athlete to become more susceptible to injuries in the future. Some injuries are accumulative, causing athletes from certain sports and training environments to have short careers. The five primary signs of an injury are redness, heat, swelling, pain, and loss of function. There are also three types of inflammation or swelling, chronic, acute, and subacute. Sprains are a very common injury. They happen as a result of misalignments, fatigue, and muscle weakness, causing damage to the ligament that hold joints together. There are three types of sprains. The first degree is a mild stretch of the ligament tissue and takes two to three days to heal. A second degree sprain is a moderate tear with pain, swelling, and bruising, and commonly takes two to eight weeks to heal. A third degree sprain is a severe tear with pain and loss of function. Six months to a year is often required, and in some cases, surgery. It is important for any athlete or movement artist or teacher to bear strictly in mind that 65% of injuries occur when the athlete is fatigued. Some injuries may be difficult to avoid, but for the large majority of injuries, prevention can be as simple as being aware of your environment and controlling the space in which you practice and train. Take note of the floor, the heat, cold, altitude, and any other possible hazards. But beyond the environmental conditions, an athlete must take particular care to condition the body effectively. Such an athlete is also aware of his or her strengths and weaknesses and concentrates with great intensity during the exercise or practice, maintains consistent ideal body weight which should be discussed with your doctor. This athlete is also aware of the need for rest and eats well. He or she recognizes the warning signs that signal fatigue and cuts back on the activity or intensity that caused the fatigue. Even the smartest athlete can't avoid all hazards. You will be hurt sometime despite precaution. So it is good to know about the different kinds of injuries in order to make decisions about whether to see a doctor. Here we will discuss the three types of injuries, traumatic, chronic, and systemic. Traumatic injuries are caused by falls or sudden accidents or impacts, like taking a blow from a kick or punch, and include fractures, sprains, strains, bruises, contusions, concussions, cuts, lacerations, dislocations, and subluxations. For chronic injuries, the suffix itis refers to inflammation which is common in chronic conditions. Misalignment, inadequate conditioning, and muscular imbalances are the most common causes of chronic conditions which include tendonitis, which is an inflammation of the tendon, bursitis. The bursa are the ball bearings of the body located at high friction points. Undue stress may cause irritation and inflammation knees, shoulders, and hips are common areas affected by this. Myositis and fasciitis, both are general inflammation of muscle or connective fascia. Generalized swelling and spasm of muscles are its effects. Major misalignments contribute to these conditions. Remember, of course, that muscular imbalances in the body can lead to misalignments. Systemic injuries include shock, hyperventilation, salt deficiency, anemia, and hypoglycemia. Shock usually accompanies traumatic injuries. Symptoms include cold, paleness, lightheadedness, nausea, and a shallow, weak, rapid pulse. Hyperventilation is breathing too much. Symptoms include deep, panicky breathing, accompanied by weakness, dizziness, and nausea. Deficiencies with salt, anemia, and hypoglycemia, low salt, iron, and blood sugar. Each result in weakness and fatigue. Sweating during a workout leads to dehydration and loss of minerals like salt and potassium. Without this, the muscles go into spasm. You may also feel nauseated from lack of water. Plain water is the best way to replace fluids. Eating a good diet with fruit and vegetables replaces minerals. Iron and blood sugar both result in fatigue, but for different reasons. 
Without iron, the body can't make red blood cells to transport oxygen. Oxygen is used in the metabolism process to make energy for your body to function. Sugar is also used for energy and for the resynthesis of lactic acid, which builds up over time with muscle conditioning. The tissue repair process always creates some scar tissue. The body is very efficient with healing, but often produces too much scar tissue. Scar tissue is inelastic and has no circulation, so it cannot do what normal tissue can. Scar tissue is also extremely strong. The fibers are laid in every direction rather than parallel to the fibers of the injured area. The area can often be re-injured in approximately the same spot because the tissues can tear away at the seam of the scar. For these reasons, we apply ice because it is thought that it helps to reduce the production of scar tissue. Mild stretching should also be applied to an injury because this encourages the collagen fibers to be laid down more parallel with the surrounding tissue so there will be less interference with the capacity to stretching. Of course, the best and most well-known recovery system is referred to as the RICE method. RICE is an acronym referring to rest, ice, compress, and elevate. It is also useful to discuss the psychology of injuries. Athletes who are used to a vigorous regiment can often feel depressed and have a hard time putting down an activity for the necessary amount of time for the body to properly heal. This can lead to re-injuries or further injuries. Some of the myths about recovery include this. If one set of therapy exercise is good, 10 sets must be 10 times as good. Follow the regimen recommended by your attending physician. Ask questions to understand what the consequences may be if it is not followed. Short and long-term effects should be considered. As well intended as therapy exercises may be, overuse of any exercise can lead to aggravation of an injury or cause other injuries. Younger students have a tendency to live in the indestructo mode of training. My body will be resilient, quick to heal, and mobile forever. Older students know better. Old injuries can come back to haunt you. Good sound advice at the time of injury can be the most effective medicine. You may ignore it, but at least you will have an understanding of what the possible effects will be. 3. Martial artists develop a great ability to continue practice despite pain. In fact, the adrenaline of a hard practice and the physical exertion of practice, sparring or technique or technique training can have a dulling effect on pain. But pain is valuable. The smart student pays attention to this warning signal. Common sense and an understanding of the difference between good pain and bad pain are essential to the martial artists and other movement artists and athletes. So now let's talk about good pain and bad pain. Of course, no pain feels good, but some kinds of pain lead to increased capacity. Muscle pain, like the burning you feel when conditioning for muscular endurance, is a perfect example. It says the muscle is working past previous capacities. The body responds well to working past previous capacities, so long as the work is not so severe to cause spasm. Stretching after a workout is another good pain. Stretching should feel warm with generalized prickling. Any pain associated with increasing capacity will be generalized and dull. In contrast, bad pain is sharp, piercing, highly localized, and sometimes shooting to other parts of the body. Tendinitis is localized pain. Bone contacting has a sharp pinching sensation. Any sharp shooting pain should cause a stop and investigation of the cause. In some cases, this kind of pain is related to nerve injuries. Pain from injury is caused by three factors. One, injured tissue itself. Two, spasm of muscles around the site of injury. And three, the swelling that immediately follows and puts pressure on surrounding nerve endings. Now we'll discuss the overuse injury. The characteristics of overuse injuries include a gradual insidious onset, no history of trauma, typically no indication of a major inflammatory process, and is usually the result of repetitive activity. The progression of these symptoms include pain after sporting activities, pain with sporting activities, but with no decrease in performance. 
pain during sporting activities with decreased performance, followed by an inability to perform sporting activities, and eventually pain during everyday activities. Common overuse injuries include tendonitis, stress fractures, anterior knee pain, shin splints, and plantar fasciitis. Contributing factors include aerobic conditioning, nutrition, strength deficits, flexibility deficits, and foot biomechanics. Here is a list of other indications of injury. Compensations, limping, supination and other gait adjustments, holding a limb close, favoring, with a stressed look on the face, uncommon sweating, disorientation or dizziness in more severe cases, maintaining an off-balance position with a decreased performance level or decrease in function. Hey everyone, thanks for watching this video. I hope that you found it useful. If you're studying this material for an exam, I hope it goes well for you and that this video has been something that you can refer back to. And it would be really helpful to me if you would leave a comment and let me know what parts of the video were most useful to you in your preparations or if this was just for your own enjoyment uh, and education. I hope that you'll consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel and check out our Patreon page. In the meantime, I have several more videos like this and others along the way, so check out the rest of the channel, and I'll see you all next time.